Hi, my name is Satish Srinivasan. I'm a consultant corneal surgeon from University Hospital Air in Air, Scotland. Today, I'll be talking to you about the small aperture optics. Uh, as you know that management of presbyopia is the Achilles heel um, for any of the refractive surgeons. And there are several options available in the management of presbyopia. Uh, we have management of the corneal plane where you could use um, a laser to create multifocality on the cornea, or you could use a small aperture uh, inlay in the corneal plane, or you could correct presbyopia in the lenticular plane where we could be do lens-based surgery and um, introduce either trifocal intraocular lenses or extended depth of focus intraocular lenses um, for the correction of presbyopia. In this lecture, I'll be talking to you about correcting presbyopia with a new technology using the small aperture optics principle. So now we are talking about a new technology where we are uh, using a, a, yet another tool uh, in the management of uh, presbyopia correction, uh, which is by using a small aperture um, technology, which once again enhances the depth of focus. This small aperture intraocular lens uh, is uh, acts very much in uh, as the principal as uh, a SLR camera uh, based on the aperture size. As and we all know that um, bigger the aperture size in the camera you get a smaller depth of focus. And as we decrease the aperture size, uh, we get a larger depth of focus. So this is the very simple um, principle which we uh, utilize uh, in the optics of the small aperture intraocular lens. So this is an example uh, of a slide which shows the, where the depth of focus is set at about 7.96 feet with an f-stop simulating 5 point uh, f-stop set at 5.6, which stimulates a human mesopic pupil of four millimeter. As you can see from the slide, there are uh, of the different targets, only two targets in the middle are legible um, because the f-stop is set at 5.6 with a mesopic, simulating a mesopic pupil of four millimeter. But by changing the f-stop to 22, which simulates a pupil size of 1.6 millimeter, you can see from the slide that much more targets come into focus. Once again, these two slides um, drives home the point that by reducing the aperture size, one can increase the depth of focus without compromising on the optical quality of the image. So this is the small aperture intraocular lens, which is called the IC8, uh, manufactured by a uh, company called Acufocus based in uh, California. So it's, it's a very similar to a standard monofocal intraocular lens. It's a three piece, it's a single piece acrylic, hydrophobic acrylic intraocular lens with a modified C-loop haptic. Uh, it has got a six millimeter optic, uh, modified C-loops, and the overall diameter is 12.5 millimeters. Uh, the interesting part is in the middle of the optic where it has got a central mask measuring 3.23 millimeters and a central aperture simulating an artificial pupil measuring 1.36 millimeters. This intraocular lens has got an aspheric uh, anterior surface. It has got 360 degree square edge to reduce posterior capsule pacification. And it has got uh, 0.27 microns of induced negative spherical aberration to counteract uh, for the positive spherical aberration induced by the uh, human cornea. So this is a video illustrating uh, the implantation of the IC8 intraocular lens. Uh, the surgical procedure is no different uh, from any other surgical uh, lens surgical procedure that we used for lens-based surgery, be it cataract surgery or refractive lens exchange. In this, I'm using a virus, which is a, a disposable silicon ring, which helps to um, center the capsular axis on the patient's uh, visual axis um, based uh, on the first Perkunji image from the operating microscope. So this is a silicon ring which could be um, placed on the anterior lens surface. This ring measures anywhere between 5.5 to 6 millimeter. In this example, we have used a ring measuring 5.5 millimeters. Uh, this nicely uh, centers uh, and helps to center the um, capsular axis opening uh, over the patient's um, first Purkunji reflex 
uh, centering it on the visual axis. Once the capsular axis is performed, the uh, standard phaco emulsification is uh, carried out to remove the nuclear lens fragments and um, bimanual uh, irrigation aspiration uh, device is used to remove the cortical lens material. This is the injector cartridge for the IC8 and the IC8 is removed from the car uh, holding device and placed inside the custom made cartridge and OBD is injected into the nozzle of the cartridge to facilitate the smooth transition of the intraocular lens uh, during injection technique. The wound is enlarged to around 3 millimeters, and the IC8 intraocular lens is injected into the capsular bag as one would inject a standard monofocal intraocular lens. Once the IC8 uh, is injected, both the haptics are placed uh, within the capsular bag and I usually tend to uh, place the haptics uh, uh, in the vertical position where the haptics are placed at uh, 6 and uh, sorry at um, 6 and 12 o'clock positions and then care is taken to remove the um, residual OBD from behind the intraocular lens so that there is no anterior shift of the uh, intra uh, of the IOL and care is taken to make sure that the IC8 is centered over the first percuncy reflex. Uh, this is the uh, post-operative slit lamp photograph view showing the nicely centered um, IC8 intraocular lens over the patient's visual axis. I just want to share with you the uh, uh, multi-centered European uh, post-market study with six months follow-up data. This was a multi-centered European trial which was carried out across uh, 12 sites um, in Europe. Uh, during this six-month study, 108 subjects were uh, recruited uh, where IC8 intraocular lens was implanted monocularly in one eye um, with a refractive target of minus 0.75 diopters and the fellow eye had a standard aspheric monofocal intraocular lens. This graph so sh shows the mean monocular uncorrected visual acuities in the IC8 eye for far, intermediate and near at one, three and six months. The blue graph, the blue line depicts the uncorrected distance visual acuities in log logmar. The orange graph, um, orange line depicts the uncorrected intermediate visual acuities uh, in logmar. And the green line depicts the uncorrected near visual acuity in log logmar at month one, month three and month six. And as you can see, uh, these patients achieved uh, excellent uncorrected distance, uncorrected intermediate and uncorrected near visual acuities in the IC8I at month one, month three and month six. This, is, this graph shows the mean binocular uncorrected um, visual acuities once again at far, intermediate and near at month one, month three and month six. And as you can see from this graph, the, because of the binocular summation, the binocular uncorrected visual acuities for all distances are better compared to the monocular uh, acuities in the IC8I. This is the binocular target corrected defocus curves uh, where the IC8I has been targeted for minus 0.75 diopters of myopia. And in this graph, the, the defocus curve shows that patients were able to achieve continuous functional range of vision right from emetropia to over 2.75 diopters. This is the contrast sensitivity data uh, at six months where binocular contrast sensitivity was tested. And this is equivalent uh, to the contrast sensitivity um, in the monofocal eye and neuroadaptation and retinal response to illumination will further um, boost the contrast performance in the IC8I. Uh, even though monocularly the IC8I has slightly reduced contrast compared to the monofocal eye, the binocular contrast sensitivity, sensitivity shows no difference uh, when compared to the monofocal, uh, implant, monofocal IOL implanted eye. This is the influence of the refractive error on visual acuity, showing that the IC8 IOLI can tolerate up to one diopters of deviation from the refractive target 
without compromising on the uncorrected distance, uh, uncorrected intermediate, and uncorrected near vision eye. And this is the study which was published by Robert Ang from Philippines uh, in, in clinical ophthalmology, showing that the um, small aperture intraocular lens can tolerate up to 1.5 diopters of pre-existing corneal astigmatism. So in other words, uh, these patients do not require a toric intraocular lens if they have a pre-existing corneal astigmatism of 1.5 diopter, up to 1.5 diopters. This could be corrected by just using a IC8 uh, intraocular lens where the pinhole technology can correct uh, this pre-existing corneal uh, astigmatism. So in summary, I think from our clinical experience, it's very clear that the small aperture lens can provide good uncorrected um, distance, uncorrected near and uncorrected uh, intermediate vision in monocularly in the implanted eye. Targeting for myopia from either um, from 0.75 diopters up to one, one diopter of myopia in the IC8 eye gives them enhanced and near vision without compromising on the uncorrected distance vision. Uh, because of the small aperture technology, patients don't have any dysphotopsia symptoms and they seem to have a very good tolerance and seems to be very high patient satisfaction. And additionally, um, IC8 intraocular lens might have applications in challenging eyes like post refractive or post corneal transplant or post um, uh, radial keratotomy eyes. Thank you for your attention.